Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. My name is Brian Mason and this is the third part of the study. I will be a glorified, saith the Lord. This study in the book of the prophet Haggai. And got up to the ninth verse of the first chapter. Ye looked for much, and lo, it came to little. And when ye brought it home, I did blow upon it. Why, saith the Lord of hosts, because my, of mine house that is waste, and ye run every man unto his own house. Very clear is that that God's people had not been taking notice of God's word through his prophet. And God had withheld his hand of blessing upon the everyday lives of his people. Instead of having the harvest in abundance, instead of having their lives, as it were, filled with the blessing of God. They were nothing more than poverty-stricken. They were in great need. Their need was desperate because God had withheld his hand. God has withheld his hand of blessing. It wasn't that he brought his wrath against them. It's just that they were not in the position with God that they should have been. And how does this show us in these days too? That when the church is not right with God, the people are not right with God. And when the church is disobedient to God, in his apostasy to God, then there is sin at every hand, at every turn. A desperate position. Because when the church is not right with God, then where are the people? They are in trespasses and sins. Upon that road, which is cut off from God, not the narrow road which leads to life, life with God, life as God wants his people to have. And yet how can they be his people when the church has turned away from the very fundamentals and the greatest fundamental that it is turned away from is to call people to repentance of sins. What a desperate plight. The church which once was far more faithful to God How they say that it's been perfect down the centuries, that there's always been a glimmer of light. There's always been someone who has stood out, who's cried unto God, and God has answered their prayer, because it's been a prayer of the Holy Spirit, a prayer which has been willing to cry unto God for mercy on behalf of the people. A prayer which is sought that God shall be glorified amongst his people. But when those who are supposedly the representatives of God have gone into the world basically invited the world into the church, that there is no distinction between the church and the world in these days. 
apart from that small remnant who will not compromise with the world, that small remnant which these days is mostly elderly people who are staying with the old ways, the tried and trusted ways based on the word of God, the ways which call sin, sin and repentance for sinners to repent of their sins. Not going after the fashionable things of these days based on the self-life, the life which is encouraged to sin as if sin no longer matters to God. But God is not pleased. God is stared in his anger against the church. And that's why God is bypassing that which calls itself church in these days. But the blessing is still there for those who will honor God, those who will give their lives entirely to God. God, who gave his all, his best, in Jesus Christ, that the Father sent the Son. And the Lord Jesus Christ's blood has not been shed in vain. When there may only be a very small number of the remnant church remaining. That church, the living body of Christ here on earth. That church, which is the royal priesthood of Christ and knows their position in Christ. What's not being taught throughout the church, throughout Christianity today, is scandalous in the eyes of a holy God, because it is not, not bringing out the truths of God's word, the fundamentals of God's word, not just repentance from sin and receiving a pardon, receiving the assurance of forgiveness of sins and receiving too how through the word, the authoritative word of God, positional truth that the Christian's life is what? It's hid, hid with Christ, hid in Christ with God. Christ in us. Not just the hope of glory, but Christ in us now, whilst here on earth. That it is the life of God dwelling within these vessels, these vessels of flesh and blood, these vessels of clay as described in the Old Testament. That vessels which should be filled with the life of God life which manifests here on earth the very glory of God and it's all there in Christ it's not anywhere else when the Holy Spirit brings in the life of Christ then it flows and it flows and it flows to whom the needy those who need to receive the life, the fruit of a life which is God's life, reaching out to the cast-offs of this world, the unwanted ones of this world. But what with? Not a social gospel, but a gospel of the glorious salvation of Jesus Christ. The gospel which is the Spirit of God. That's life for now and for eternity, to be filled with God himself. Yes, the joy and the peace, they come. But the main thing is to be right with God. And here, in Haggai, God's people were not right with him. But God was given them the opportunity to become right with him. 
And it's the same today. That God will always have a remnant. However small that remnant has become. And that remnant are not self-seeking. But they're seeking for the glory of God to be made known. To be revealed. God dwelling amongst his people. And he can only dwell amongst his people when he is within his people. Not that separation. Oh, it's an abomination before God. When the, when the truths of this wonderful word of God are not being taught. Not being brought out. That the life of God is not separate from his people. Because God dwells within when he takes his rightful place upon and in our hearts. Hearts cleansed through the blood of his Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest through the blood of Jesus. That's the way. That's the message. Not a message of self-works. Not a message of social and accommodation gospel. But a message of repentance. That's what's missing. In Great Britain and these Western nations, it is fallen and into the trap of the very devil himself by compromising with the world, the flesh, and the devil. Compromising with religion. Religion is dead. It doesn't have the life of God within it because it's filled with the ideas of men and women. This is life. This is the bread of life, is the word of God. And who is the bread of life? I am the bread of life. Who knew uttered those words? None other. Then the eternal Son of God himself, as he walked in human flesh during his earthly ministry. It's not that which laughs at him and scorns at him, his name these days, but that which opens its arms to him, its heart to him, and says, I'm a sinner. I'm in need of a saviour. And you have given your life to me, Lord, Je for me, Lord Jesus Christ. You shed your blood. Every last drop of it for me. The world doesn't want to know that. The world wants to go its own way on its way to hellfire itself. I'm not pop I won't be popular, I won't be invited to go and preach at, at, at uh, different places because they don't want to hear a sin. They don't want to hear repentance. And they don't want to hear of hellfire. They want to what? To hear of the things of the world, the flesh and the devil. He want to be happy, as it were, but there's no happiness. It's holiness that God demands. Be holy, for I am holy. The world is not holy. The whole, the world is what? It's in what? The grips of that evil, evil. Filled with his filth and his lies. 
squandering, riddling in the mire of the, of the mud and filth of sin. The God, he had his word through Haggai. And what do we find? God telling them clearly, Therefore the heaven over you is stayed from dew, and the earth is stayed from her fruit. And I called for a drought upon the land, and there is a drought upon the land these days, a drought of the very preaching of the word of God in the unction of the Holy Ghost with Holy Ghost fire the fire which speaks with all the authority of Almighty God behind it repent you sinners I shall be glorified. I shall have the last say. And if you don't, whether you call yourself church, whether you relying upon your self filthy works of self righteousness, God will sweep you away. Because you've turned your back upon him. And you've laughed and made a mockery of the death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Who's now where? He's exalted at the right hand of God. Glorified. And whether you like it or not. Whether you come to him, praise God, when you get down before him and say, I have sinned before heaven and before thee. My life is filled with the filth of this world. When it should be filled with thyself. Gives opportunity that the time comes when you spurn, when you reject those drawings of God. And He will withdraw. There are very few, it seems, deathbed conversions. But most are converted in their early years. Converted before they're 25. I know, yes. I know that's what happened to me. Converted relatively young age. He gives the chance. But the longer you go on rejecting him, the more likely you'll be cut off from God forever. And the only other alternative place is to be with the one who is already your master. The devil himself and all the filth, all the sin will be with you in those flames of hell tormented forevermore. But God, who is rich in mercy, he's provided that way unto himself through the cleansing blood of those who turn to Jesus Christ and ask him to forgive them from their sins. God turned matters around here with his people at the time of Haggai. Yes, he called for a drought upon the land. 
and upon the mountains and upon the corn and upon the new wine and upon the oil and upon that which the ground bringeth forth and upon men, and upon cattle, and upon all the labor of the hands. And God has called a drought too upon that which calls itself church. There is the opportunity to repent for the church to repent, but it won't call to repent. It refuses to call sinners, sinners, and call sinners to repentance. And God has spewed it out of his mouth. And he is now working through his remnant. And it's that remnant that has the responsibility before God to move God in these days to have mercy and still bring sinners to repentance because it's through grace. It's all through grace. Not that we only the select few are given a chance. No, the gospel is for all. The gospel is, is for every creature. And of the church, the so-called state church, the so-called denominations, who have closed their hearts to preaching that glorious gospel, then God is moving in other ways. Moving from the one here and the one there and the small group Moving like this for people to find on YouTube or elsewhere or on websites the true gospel which is not watered down, which has not compromised. What happened with the remnant? And is happening now with the remnant today. As this is preached, not in, the, not in the church, not in the cathedral, not in vast audiences. No, they're not preaching the gospel. When the gospel is preached in the unction of the Holy Spirit, through his power, his power of preaching the word, moving upon hearts of those who will hear, may not hear for months or for years, but it's still going to be there to be heard. There will be still those who will hear and will obey the voice of the Lord. And as with Haggai, the people, they feared. They heard the word of God and they acted upon it. But when Repentance is not being called upon. How will the people repent and act upon it? But when you act, when the people act, what does God say? As he said with Haggai to those people, I am with you, saith the Lord. What a word. Not just with us, but in us. In us. What rations the church is giving people these days. When it fails, not just to call to repentance, but fails to proclaim the 
fullness of the Word of God. And that fullness is Christ in us. That as He is, as He was in the world, He is now living, working through us, through our hands, through our minds, through our words, through everything which is poured out as a sweet-smelling savour unto God the Father, that just as the glory of God was in Christ during his earthly ministry, so God is showing himself unto an unbelieving world through those who are filled with the same life, the same divine life, having the divine nature, because this nature, the old human nature, the old sinful nature, the old nature that was filled with the devil, has now become the divine nature, because it's filled with the divine life the life of the Son of God, as the Holy Spirit, the same Holy Spirit, that lived in and worked through the Lord Jesus Christ whilst he was on earth, is the same today within those who are his. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today and forever. And that is, forever is now and right through forever doesn't come to its end. Praise God. We give him all the praise, the honor and the glory. Heavenly Father, oh, thy word is a marvelous word. It's a word which is the living word. It, in, it eats us. It's into us. It comes out through us. And it is a glorious word. A word, yes, which calls for repentance. A word, though, which promises the life, the very life of God within those who repent of their sins and invite and accept the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. And then, for that second blessing, that sanctification, that incoming of the Holy Ghost and fire, through the blood of Jesus, through the resurrection, the ascension and the glorification of Jesus. This is all offered to thee, because you shall be glorified, saith the Lord. Amen.